like to have the, the, the director and the producer and the star of the film to come down and say hello. We'll have a question and answers next. Can you guys come down for a minute? So we know that y'all are all the way to West Africa. All the way to West The children of Bonnie and Kuma. <laughs> We see they can't just sneak into LA and run back to the crowd. But I'll say, you know, thank you very much for being here. The producer, and introduce yourself. And, uh, How are you guys doing? Oh, My name is uh, Sharon Tomlinson with Studio 11 Films, one of the producers for the movie Skin. Okay, hi, I'm Dr. Kudo. I'm a producer and writer. So, I'm uh, from the movie Skin. Hi, I'm Jasmine Burke, and I play the lead actress in Skin. Hello, I'm Latin Yeni, and I'm one of the producers of uh, Skin as well. And good evening, I'm Lisa Ray, and I am the director. And last but not least, one of my exciting favorite actors, this young man. Hi, everyone, my name is Van Vicka, and I starred in the movie. So we're going to get started, and it'll be question and answers after. We can all stay in party. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. The last time I saw you in Nigeria. So let's get started. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, sir. Hey, I'm Cameron Miller. I'm one of the. Uh, I'm the line producer and an actor. Thank you. In the film. Yes. creators, everyone who participated in the film to just come on down. If we could clap it up for them as they come. Thank you so much. Okay, good evening everybody. <laughs> Did y'all like the film? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so we are ready for you guys to ask questions of us as our beautiful director is coming down. If we can make this a little bit easier so that, you know, we don't have as much confusion. If you have a question, if you can just come and get in the line right here, if you have a question, so that we're not running the mic and we can move this quickly. If you have a question, if you can just come right Kim here. Can you come to the if you guys, if you guys have any questions, is there anybody who has a question? Come on down. How do you all enjoy the film? I have a question. How did y'all enjoy it? <laughs> you know, um, we are um, thankful to have Miss Kim Whitley to moderate the question and answer session for us. So let's give her a round of applause, please. And welcome her. And I'm going to let you take it away. Thank you. First of all, um, give it up for the movie. Um, okay, I know we're probably tired. It's been a long day. He introduced me. Y'all gave me that little a warm, <laughs> almost low clap. And some of y'all didn't clap. At least for the movie. I can understand. Oh, that's Kim Willie. We know her. But let me, one more time. Please give it up for the movie. Let's say, wake up. I'm about to give you questions. On and pop it. Do people still say that? On and pop it. Okay, so uh, you want me to just start taking the questions? Okay, that was fantastic. That's my friend, Lisa Ray. Look at you, girl. I'm so proud of you. So I gotta get this over. You directed me. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, um, questions. We will start now. We have everybody up here. These are uh, creators. All right. And uh, first question. 
Sorry. Uh, what inspired this film? Uh, I saw on Facebook a picture of Sammy Sosa. It freaked me out. Uh, so, 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 Mike, me Mike, too when I saw that. I didn't yeah. know it was him. <laughs> uh, who would like to answer that? How you guys doing? My name is uh, Sharon Tomlinson, one of the producers and co-writers of the film, along with Dr. Kula. And, uh, you know, this is uh, several people's story. Um, when I had a chance to meet Dr. Kula and she told me about the idea of the film, and we started, I started doing even more research on not just Nigeria, but other, you know, around the world, people who suffer from this situation uh, in the film. So it was inspired by several different you know, countries, nationalities, and individuals that are going through this situation. So it was a culmination of several different stories that we built to create the film. Okay, also for me, um, when I wrote the script, the original, um, it was about, I don't even know, I, just, I don't wanna cry. I don't wanna cry, I said I don't wanna cry. Okay, so I was watching, what is it, Lupita. And Lupita said, Every night before I went to sleep, I would pray to God that if he would make me one shade lighter than what I am in the morning, that I would be a good girl, I'll listen to my parents, I'll do this and I'll do that. And I looked into the hallway and I saw my daughter, who is beautiful and brown skinned, and I said, gosh, I hope she doesn't think like that. And I was so inspired and I said, I've got to tell this story. Then Lata, my friend, she and I were talking on the phone and she said the same thing. We were talking the exact same thing and she mentioned skin bleaching and all this stuff and we picked up from there. Hello guys. We are both Liberian women. I just want to give a shout out to the African people in there. Um, thank you, thank you. That's right, that's right. Um, some of you guys know, sorry I know everybody, all of us. Um, this issue, and I'm not going to cry, but I've already cried earlier. But uh, this issue is something that impacts our community, the African community, quite a bit, and is one of these silent, silent issues. So you come, you you hang it around somebody, and they're dark like me. Then six months later, they're, you know, lights like this, and you, nobody says anything, right? Everybody is just like, oh, you know that one, color change you, you know. We say it to each other, but nobody says anything. This is what happens in the African community. So this was something that is happening in my family, is happening, you know, um, shit. oh, sorry. Um, Hello, everyone. <laughs> Actually, as I was taken from my book, the one I'm holding in my hand, and um, Dr. Kula had written the script, this particular script, and when I approached her from Norway because I've actually researched the topic. I've actually used the Latin creams. So when I met with her, she's like, oh my God, oh my God, she's also writing a script about this. And I'm like, yes, I, I want to do the documentary because I'm a victim myself. I have used it. It needs to be told. So we collaborated, and here the movie is. So the book is ready, actually. I have used Latin creams, and many people don't know that it is, it's really an epidemic. It's not just um, with black people, it's anywhere you have non-white people, not pure white people, they are using it for different reasons, whether it's just for clearing skin problems. People do have legitimate skin problems, and so they want to do something about it. But other people, like you saw in the movie with Jolie, like me, we are faced with different, you know, um, I would say abuse because of your skin color. When you don't fit in and you want to do something about it, that is what I did. I didn't fit in, I didn't feel like, though I was beautiful, always, my face was always lighter than my skin, my, my legs. People always asked me, why is your legs darker than your face? So I didn't see anything wrong because these products are sold all over everywhere. You have billboards, you have chefs filled up with skin like and creams in Africa, in Nigeria, that's where I grew up. So nobody talks about it, nobody talks about it, the detrimental consequences. Mm -hmm. So now as a biochemist and a public health practitioner who has also sold these bleaching creams to people in ethnic beauty supply stores here in the States mm -hmm. for over a decade, I realized that there are so many detrimental causes like mercury and hadoquinone that is not supposed to be in these products. Mm -hmm. A lot of these chemicals are not supposed to be used for a long period of time. 
Because if you do, you are exposing yourself to this detrimental effect, adverse health effect, like we saw with Jolie. So overuse of these creams, and I must caution too, it's not just in lightning creams. You have mercury used in so many other products. So we use the opportunity to well, encourage other people to look beyond what is seen in the, in the, in the, in the screen, in the, in the cream, look at the ingredients. Mm -hmm. And above all, love yourself, loving your true skin is the message. We're not letting light-skinned people talk. Okay. <laughs> yes, yeah, don't, sorry. Director, Lisa Ray. Well, I actually wanted to speak t to that because when I was asked to direct, I thought it was something, something else to be a light-skinned woman to direct something like this, right? And I was like, really? But I'm going to say this, that as a light-skinned woman, I said, are there things that I am insecure about and I've been insecure about of being light-skinned? And one of the things is I always hear myself say, you know, I'm a sun bunny. I love the sun. And it's like, why? What? What is the real reason why I like the sun? And it's because I feel like I want to be kissed by the sun because I want to be darker. Because when you're darker, it feels like you have a shade of foundation on. You feel a little darker where you can hide that varicose vein that's on the side. You know, the suntan line is like, ooh, I got the sun on me. And then I remember back in the day when I didn't feel like light skin was so, um, so, so good. You know, and I said, well, that's the opposite from what we're doing here, but yet the same. But yet the same. And so when I found out that this was an epidemic that was going on amongst us, not just here, but in Africa, in the Caribbean, I said, this is my way to tell the story as well. And so being a first time director, I think this was supposed to be a documentary at first, and then it turned into a real bigger message to become a movie. And when they said, you know, we want you to direct this, I said, me? I'm used to being in front of the camera. But I'm damn sure tired of being told what to do, so yeah. I'm going to take it. Stand here, cry but no tears, you know. And it's like, what you want, you know? And so I said, I want to step into the boss mode, you know? and do something different, a new beginning of, the, of, of just transitioning from the front, and front of the camera to the back. And I was nervous, and being a woman of my word, I said, if I call and say I'm gonna do it, then I have to do it. And so that's what I did. I said, I'm gonna do it. And it was actually before I even read all of the script. I think maybe I was on page 12. <laughs> no, <laughs> I went halfway through the script and I said, yeah, this is opportunity, not just for me. And you have to always think bigger than just yourself. You think about the message. And even when we were coming here today, I said, don't hand me the mic too much because I ain't got too much to say. <laughs> this is your movie. This is your message. And I just brought it to life in a visual way, you know. And so sometimes when we come and have opportunities like this, we don't even know what questions to ask. But I'm going to tell you, the cast is here. They did a phenomenal job. But even... But even question of how did we get here? How did the movie be become made? How did the idea come about? How do you get distribution at this at this point? How did you guys get here and how do we get accepted in the Pan-African Film Festival? How do, if, I, if I'm an aspiring actress, how do I get into uh, an indie role, an indie film or whatever? So you guys feel free to be able to use us because I'm leaving in five minutes because my feet hurt, so hurry up. Girl, I was wondering why there wasn't no chairs up here. We was 20 though, we were stood up here. Right now, I was like, oh, I need y'all to bring those chairs. Okay, I, I know a young lady over here had a question. I got to control. Good job. Is that your real color? <laughs> this is some bullshit here. So, see, I came in late. So, was you brown or light? I'm confused. So, did they darken you or lighten you? They darkened you. Well, and lighten you. And so y'all darkened her, and then she became lighter as the movie went on. This, you was always light. This, <laughs> this one right here. This one. But I, Lapita, when she was doing that prayer, she was crazy. Uh, 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 me and Lisa Ray were in a, a, 
a documentary Bill Duke directed called Light Girls. And I never even thought, yeah, we just did that. So I had the same prayer, but I was praying, Lord, please let me wake up and be brown skinned. So it's always a problem. Welcome. What is your question? And let's keep our answers brief. Can I touch you? I'm such a fan. comment is thank you because there's a lot of sisters and I, and I teach that are experiencing the same thing that you put on the, on the film and I appreciate that. And then my, my other question is how many times did you have to stop and cry? Because I can see that going on. I was going to say making them cry. So how many, y'all cried a lot? Okay, good. Next question. That's how you keep it real quick. And I'm just trying to understand, is the, this is my question, is the bleaching problem here in the United States, or is it in Africa and around the world? But not really in the United States. People ain't just really, I mean, Michael was doing it a lot, but uh, I don't think we, I mean, I get bleaching green, but I wasn't just like, ooh, I put it all on my face. Like maybe when I shaved and my beard was coming out, but not... All right, next question. I mean, that's what you're going to do. You're going to take it right up under my chin. Just going to take the picture right there. Just all this. Yeah, you know better. I need you hanging from up there before you take a picture of me. We done had this dang old conversation. Next question. Uh, Y'all had to stand up in the back. Uh, yes, sir? Um, first of all, I just want to say congratulations. Um, I think you guys have made a wonderful movie that everyone needs to see, especially in my country, Nigeria. My sister actually is a victim of skin bleaching, and um, many people in my family, and I think a lot of Africans, um, I don't know if they can say they don't know one person who hasn't been a victim of skin bleaching. Um, so my question for you is, um, what is a solution to this problem? What What do you think can be done to empower people to feel good about their skin tone? First of all, let's give it that bleach, and we shut it down. <laughs> Yes, um, <laughs> okay, 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 yes, for the English. and it's also additive, it's a mental health issue, and it is all hands on this. Everyone needs to be involved. It's not a matter of pointing fingers as to who has used it and who has not. So we all need to step in and start to encourage and build each other up. That is what the book is also about to. Yeah, I agree. Um, this is something, by bringing a film like this, I mean, again, this is something that we've been suffering with in our communities, Africans in the Caribbean and so on and so forth. But first, bringing it to the forefront, making it, people know that it's a real issue, and then dealing with it, you know, at the core within our own families, you know, talking to your siblings, talking to the people you know are bleaching, and letting them know the, the, the dangers of this thing, because people don't know. Because they're looking brighter, they're looking nicer, and the guys are giving them a little more attention, that's what counts more so than the fact that you are dying inside and that this, these toxins are getting uh, in your body. So, I'm sorry, that was quick. Is that good? You're going to have to tweet whatever you need to say. we got five minutes. Go, go, go ahead. Real fast. Um, there's an organization that we are attaching ourselves with, and it's Ama uh, Abris. Um, she has a, a movement that she's doing it, and it's empowering to young women as well. So we'll have information, not to keep it brief long, but we'll have information on the website, uh, which is skinthemovie.com. So if you guys go there, you can find more information about the movement that's happening, and of course, bringing awareness through the film. And the book is on the website. What's the name of the book? Dying Inside? Loving Your True Skin. Loving your true skin. And she has a few copies. And, and another thing I just wanted to say real quick is we're going to have to start at the beginning. Whatever happened to Black is Beautiful? Remember that movement? 
Everybody wanted to be black then. We gotta go back to that. Yeah. Everybody wanted to hear all natural. Trying to get dark. That's what we gotta start at the beginning. Black is beautiful. What's our, our next uh, question? Because I don't know what color I am. The, ma the master that got up in me and messed my color up. Well, go ahead, honey. Sorry. Oh, here, get violent. We was in Africa, we would be at it. I went to a couple of countries outside of the states and looking to our motherland and in this four countries for purity and 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 love opposite of what we deal with here in America. I was very disheartened and brokenhearted to find that it was the exact opposite and that there was so much um, lack of esteem in terms of color, et cetera, et cetera, and it broke my heart and I fall, I fall, I fall. And so thank you for creating this and please do more to make sure that this gets as into many theaters as possible so that our people can see this around the world and make more and more films like this here. Very good. We got three minutes. I see one up here. I'd like to ask you guys what, um, how can we help you get the word out about the film? That's important. And I'm, I'm going to get you, young lady. Uh, yeah. how, how can we help you? Distribution, distribution, distribution. Um, I mean, there's some, several ways. Obviously, we are going to be uh, doing a, a premiere in Nigeria and outside of the country as well. Uh, so the film has taken some legs of its own, praise God, that that has happened. But obviously, this is a stepping stone being able to have it screened at Pan-African Film Festival. Um, so we're excited about that. And, you know, social media obviously is, is a big part of, of getting the word out, just spreading the word about the film. Um, Yes, the people's choice. So vote for this film so that this film can have an opportunity to win in the film festival as well. And and I know we're having a good time up here. We're having fun. But, you know, I want to say personally that, you know, my friend Lisa Ray did an amazing job at, di at directing this film. Um, absolutely, hands down. Um, I want to give the two actors on the end an opportunity to speak because... They had the opportunity to really experience hands-on her directing and just the comments that, that came from them, I would like for them to share and just have an opportunity to speak. Because Jasmine, you did an amazing job as, as well as Van Victor and Cameron Miller. So I would have a lot of actors to have a chance to say something as well. Well, um, first of all, I just want to thank everybody who came out to watch the film and support it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pan-African Film Festival. We're very pleased to be here. Um, I just want to say, I just, how I feel, I just feel blessed to be a vessel. That's it, that's all. To be an actress and, you know, I'm rising in, in the business um, to get a script like this come my way and I get to be used by God. I'm really appreciative. And uh, I just thank the team. It, I, it's a team effort. And, um, yeah, y'all are all black and beautiful. And, and brown and beautiful. I'll see you. Uh, I want to thank all of you for coming out. I really appreciate you guys patronizing this film. Uh, for me, yeah, for me, I think uh, it's it's an epidemic in, in Africa. I know personally, I know a few friends, actresses who are actually bleaching to be lighter. And I think one of the problems would be the film producers uh, the, those who make music videos, they usually tend to put the lighter skin ahead of, of the darker skin. And I have spoken a few times uh, on a radio show, TV shows, that um, in order for this to, 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 to be lowered, we personally, film producers, video makers, uh, you guys need to actually take on the talents not because of what, what their skin color is, but because of what it can do. And I think uh, with this film, education is a good starter. And uh, I know my people back home and around the world, they, they will love to, to, to watch this film because the message, I think, is really strong. And I'm not going to go on again. I'm done. Thank you very much. One more question. Uh, there was a young lady right there. Go ahead, stand up. Like we're in class and say you're, what's happening? 
drastic because we wanted to teach a lesson and not many people end up with fertility usually it's one to two percent that have the infertility issues where they can't have children and every now and again you're looking at five six ten percent that have skin cancer so not that many people but in order for this movie to really hit home we had to we had to make it drastic we had to give her every possible issue she could have so yeah and there is, as far as skin bleaching is concerned, I know when we did the numbers in Nigeria, 80% of women in Nigeria bleach their skin. 80%. So it's a huge population of people who bleach their skin, and the results of it can be, like Dr. Kula said. Oh, no, they're going to get rid of us. I knew it. They was going to get us some kind of way. All over the world, they're going to be no more black people. So, um, we can we gotta really kinda wrap this up. I, I, I think some people gotta think you really wanna speak, don't you? Go ahead, soul sister. I see you. Come on. She said Lisa Ray did a great job. She said Lisa Ray did a great job. You can stand up and let people hear. They wanna hear too. So do you see yourself directing any more films or did you catch a bug where you're gonna do it again and keep going? Directing movies? Yeah, it did a lot for me actually, um, because it made me realize being in front of the camera so much that I had creative possibilities inside, you know? Mm -hmm. And it helped me on the other side as a director and it helped me being a director that's an actress because I was able to see what I wanted to see and nurture the way that I wanted to nurture and perhaps be the type of director that I always wanted a person to be to me, which was like Miss Debbie Allen when I worked with her. She was very nurturing. She told me to trust my instincts, and she gave me that. And so I remember one of the scenes that <clears throat> Jasmine had, uh, the last scene of her on that uh, chair out there um, in the city, in the park. And she was ready, because she's always been ready. I didn't even have to start over ever because she forgot or flubbed her line, by the way. But I went to her... <laughs> But yeah, I mean, that's like take one, take two for me, right? right? But I remember going to her in her ear, and it was really nothing about the film. It was just something that I felt like I needed to say to her to bring her closer to the character and where she was, and I took her there. And she went there. She trusted and listened to what I was saying. And when I moved back out of the scene and said, action, I was like, Damn, I'm good. <laughs> so, no, so I'm saying that to say that I found something um, that I have a niche for. And it's not just being a boss and calling the shots or whatever, because just like Jasmine said, it's a team effort. And I learned that just being in front. But being behind, I have to say, I really enjoy just putting a hat on and not sitting in the chair for hair and makeup for two hours before I had to go on. Y'all can have that. You passed the torch. So yes, absolutely. I got the bug and I will be directing again. Thank you, Sharon, and Dr. Kula for this opportunity. Well, I got a question now. <laughs> I mean, I was sitting well, around. Yes. Why did y'all pick Lisa Ray Ooh. to direct? Ooh. Ooh. Both. Ooh. We didn't vote that answer. <laughs> no. No, we didn't go. Did you I just like that's interesting. That, that what what uh yeah. Well, to be to be honest with you. <laughs> to be honest with you, um L Lisa Ray had initially uh directed, co directed us a, a short film. And I saw her passion instantly. Um, it was it was an opportunity through a project that we did, 111 project with Studio 11 Films. And I asked her if she would come on board. She was a mentor to the project. 
and she also came on and she co-directed one of the short films. She was only supposed to be on set for like a few hours. She ended up staying there the entire time because she had the passion and the love and the drive. And we talked and I knew that that was something that even after that, that I saw that she would be amazing at directing. So when Dr. Kula and I talked, you know, we, we had a long conversation and we just felt like bringing that out as a woman, being behind the camera and directing this type of film, that she would do an amazing job because I know her heart and her passion for just empowering women uh, across the board. So I knew that she would be an amazing person at this film. Okay, well for me, I'm not even gonna lie. When I saw Lisa Ray, the very first time I saw you was um, All of Us. Is that what the name of the show is? And the first, I was doing something and you came on the TV and the first thing I said, wow, that woman is beautiful. That was my first thought. And so when we were doing this film, I kept thinking, and Blatt and I were talking, and I said, huh, if I were to pick a celebrity to do this film, it would have to be Lisa Ray. Because for me, I felt like she embodied beauty, but she wasn't standoffish about her beauty. You know, some people are like, oh, I'm all that. She wasn't like that. From the characters and things I had seen of her, I thought, wow. <laughs> She's not like that. She's just been playing. So when I saw the short film that she had done for Sharon, I said, oh, Sharon, we got to get her. We have to get her. So that's, that was my motivation for doing that. And having said that, I know we're at the end because they're telling us we have to leave. So before we end, I always have to do something. I have to give out some awards because you have to give credit to where credit is due. So as a team, Lisa Ray came on board and did a wonderful job directing for us. You find hers. So we made her a plaque that said, Lisa Ray, best director. Lisa Ray McCoy. On behalf of the Skin Movie, because L. Ray, you did a good job. When we conference and you said you were going to do it, you didn't let me down. She said, I, when she came the first night, she came straight from the flight, straight to where we were shooting. And, she, and I said, you didn't have to come. You could have rested. She said, girl, I told you, I got you. And that was it. And I really appreciated that. So thank you. Okay. Next, we want to give an award to our beautiful, fabulous actress, Miss Jasmine Burke. Okay. So Jasmine is a wonderful actress. You know, she was in Drumline 2 and all this cool stuff. So imagine me as a producer saying to Jasmine, in order for us to make you dark, you're going to have to sleep at my house. She slept at my house. We woke up at 4 or 5 in the morning to make her dark because it was not going to happen. It took forever. It's like two, three hours. We have been practicing, and we finally got it right, so we made her dark. So I appreciate you for spending the night. And just and my, my daughter played the younger version of her. And so you were so sweet to her. She said you're a wonderful actress. Aww. And she thanks you. Yeah, so Jasmine Burke. Wait, Jasmine memorized the entire script, by the way. Yes, she did. Yeah, and when she first read it, she called us. She was like, oh my God, you go to the script. It's fabulous. Thank you. So we were happy. She's wonderful. I love her. Yes. Okay. So next. Okay. <laughs> Next is one of my favorite actors, okay, of course, of course. Yes, yes, not because I'm his manager or anything, but he is my favorite actor, uh-huh. His name is Joseph Van Vicker, and we give him this plaque because he's earned it. He came from Ghana, Liberia represents. Yes, he came all the way from Africa, didn't tell me no, barely read the script, memorized what he needed to, and he was just awesome. And I thank God for you, Van. Wonderful. Okay. All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming out. Give Miss Kim Whitley a huge round of applause. If your name is Avery Williams, you can have it. I want to say thank you, and please watch Raising Whitley on Open Women Network. Oh, Saturday night, 9 o'clock.